Hey guys, thanks for joining me. On this video, or this episode, I'm actually going to talk about a couple of things that I've done to the truck. So there's a couple of things that I'm going to talk about here. Um, and one is the suspension system on, on my truck. If you watch a lot of videos, you know I have a lift. Um, well, it's not really a lift, it's a leveling kit. So I, when I first got the truck, a leveling kit was sufficient and it did the job. But one thing that I've been putting off for a while was um, getting an actual suspension system in here, something aftermarket. Um, and so just recently I, I got that done and uh, I'll have Tom from Hunter's 4x4 up in Citrus Heights um, tell you guys what we did. So here's Tom. So on the front end, we went ahead and we did the uh, Bilstein uh, 6112 kit in the front, yep. struts okay. and springs. Uh, we matched that with a set of uh, SPC adjustable control arms, as well as the uh, differential drop to match in the front. And then we moved on to the rear and we did the Old Man Emu Dakar rear springs, as well as the Bilstein 5100 shocks. And then we did a three quarter inch carrier bearing drop as well to keep our pinion angles matched make sure we have no funky vibrations or anything wearing out uh, well that, that was the suspension system so that's I'll show you what it looks like right now it looks very similar I got about um, half an inch lift on the back from what I had with the leveling kit that's it the front is pretty much the same but I have to say the the right quality is amazing it's I don't know why this truck doesn't come with it from factory this way it, it rides really smooth got really good control I don't feel all the little bumps anymore and I I should have done this long time ago but well now you know and now I know as well um, the other thing is if you if you have this um, 2013 model up all the way up till 2015 they all have this similar issue but uh, this um, rear hitch connector plug-in um, it's mounted on the bottom here let me show get you a better perspective here so this right here as you can see with mine it's completely busted off you can see where it's all fallen apart I don't know if you can see that but let me show it to you from this angle. Here's the bracket. It's completely bent all the way up to the top. This is all busted up. And this is basically how it was after I damaged it. So what I'll be doing here is I'm actually going to cut a hole right here. And I have this product from Hopkins. It's a plug-in. That's going to go in here. The factory mount on this is, is terrible. The position on it was, I don't know what they were thinking, but on the newer Tacomas they fixed this. It's actually up here. The newer Tacoma also has a lot of room up here. I don't. I have a slight curve here, so I'm going to have to deal with that. But the product that I got from Hopkins, it's a single smaller product. It's a 10-pin connector and it doesn't take, it's not wide, so it's supposed to fit in just fine, or at least I think it's going to fit in just fine. So, you no, know, I'm going to do that next and see what that comes out to. After this, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I did with my radio situation.
Well guys, there you have it. So, it's already installed. I soldered all the wires, screwed it in the back terminal, and then there's a cap, sealed that. I got four screws holding that in, and as you can see, yes, perfectly accessible. It's not a here anymore. It's not gonna show you real quick or um, talk to you about I used to use CB radios when I first installed CB radio in here I thought it was great um, had a big old antenna on the roof and um, I realized that not a lot of people use CB radios and you know it was just always a, an issue getting the antenna right you had to get it tuned and there's a lot of noise and um, so I kind of drifted away from CB radio the other issue was if we use one of our handheld radios, uh, GM RS radio, and um, we try to get out from the truck and and talk to someone outside of the truck, we couldn't do that with a CB radio. We had to, you know, we have to get a handheld CB radio, which is a lot bigger. So what I did was uh, I switched that to a Midland. It's the MT115. It's a GM RS radio, and it's a it's the micro radio. It's really small show you what it looks like so that's the radio right there this is it pretty much it's got a USB charging port for cell phone or anything else you can charge you got your little volume knob right here speakers built in on the bottom I'll show you what it looks like so that's how it's mounted here's the radio for it it's got the channel buttons on it it's middling works really well and you can see how small that is. I still have my storage down here for all my stuff. So that really didn't take away the storage. But my CB was really big. It used to be right here. It used to fit right in the slot. And I put the slot back in so I can use it for coins. So no more CB for me. I'll be using the Midland GMRS radio now. Um, I just think for us it's a lot more convenient and it's gonna, it should serve as well. The antenna on the roof is literally a 6 inch antenna. Um, you can't even see it unless you're real close to the truck. Alright, so till next time. Oh, uh, before I go, uh, we're actually headed out to the Alabama Hills trip um, March 30th, so there'll be video going up on that. Keep an eye out for that. Um, it's a two, three day, three day trip. So, got maybe like three trucks or four trucks going with us so far. <clears throat> All right. So, if you like the videos, please subscribe and thank you for supporting us. And until uh, next time.